the matter? What is it? Another case for Nick Carter, the master detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters. The detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Tonight's curious adventure... The Flying Duck Murders. For Nick Carter and the Gold Thieves. Carter, unless you think more of a large fat fee than you do of your life... I advise you to throw up the case at once. Apparently, we don't look at this in the same light, Mr. Dalrymple. I expect danger, and I'm prepared to meet it. I suppose you know that two other detectives have come out to this wild Montana country where the flying duck mine is located trying to find the trouble. But do you know that neither of them lived to tell what they found? How were they killed, Mr. Dalrymple? They went crazy, Miss Bowen. Kessler, the San Francisco man, fell over a cliff. While Riley, the man from Chicago, dropped 600 feet down the main shaft of the mine. Very interesting. I feel quite sure that Nick won't share their fate. May I inquire for whom you are acting, Mr. Carter? You may. For Mr. Cecil Trenwick, an old friend of my father's and a large shareholder in the Flying Duck Mine. He said that you'd cooperate with me in every possible way. I shall do what I can, certainly. Good. I should like you to give me a letter to the superintendent of the mine, telling him that I'm a good workman and that you promised me a job. I shall disguise myself as a miner, using the name Dave Jarvis. Very well. Uh, You said your name will be Dave Jarvis? Right. Uh, Well, that'll do what you want. Give it to Mr. Nate Crosby, the mine super. He happens to be here in town this morning. Unless you change your mind and decide to return to New York. Thank you, Mr. Dalrymple. But I'm staying here until my work is finished. Good morning. Goodbye. Good morning. Wait a minute, Patsy. I wonder if Mr. Dell remembers. Four three one operator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello. I want to speak to Nate Crosby. Okay, I'll wait. Crosby, he's the mine superintendent. Yes, things are beginning to move already. Yeah. If I open this door a crack, we'll hear better. Nate, this is Dalrymple. Frenick has done what he's been threatening to do for so long. He sent Nick Carter out here to investigate. Yes, Nick Carter, the one man in the world I'm afraid of. They've got to market the stuff right away. We can't wait any longer now. I'll give him the the job he wants and then take care of him. Yes, if you don't, it may mean curtains for all of us. Right. So long. And that will settle your future, Mr. Nick Carter. I very much doubt that, Mr. Dalrymple. (laughs) Thanks for the attention, Mr. Dalrymple. But I intend to take care of my own future. So, Mr. Dalrymple is in on the deal. He certainly is, Gubby, up to his neck. Well, at least we start off with one good hot prospect. What do we do now? Get into your miner's office. Then take this note down to this address and give it to Nate Crosby, the mine super. Now, remember, your name's Dave Jarvis and Crosby to give you a job in the mill. Okay, Nick. Then what? Well, first and foremost, keep your eyes open. Crosby will believe you're Nick Carter. So watch out for him. To try to put you out of the way. And don't forget, Scobby, the detectives from Chicago and Frisco both came to grief. Well, it's going to be different with the guy from New York. Now, Patsy, you wait here at the hotel where we can get in touch with you if we need you. Sure, Nick. All right, get going, Scubby. I'm going out to the mine right away. You wait, though, and ride out with Crosby. And watch out for him. Right, Nick. I'll keep one eye on him and one on the mine. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, bud. That's okay, pal. That's the super's office right there. Thanks. I'll be seeing you. Hey, you looking for someone? You the super of the Flying Duck Mine? No, I'm the assistant super. Clem Hendricks is the name. Well, my name's King. I'm writing up an article about the mines of Montana for the Miners' Times of Kansas City. Any objection to me sticking around a while, looking things over? None at all, Mr. King. Just so long as you say something good about us in your article. You want me to show you around? No, thanks. I'll just drift around and see what I can pick up. If anyone stops you, tell them I said it was okay. Thanks, I will. You seeing you? Now, find the boss.
course of the day shift and get some information on how this place operates. These are the Mills stamping machines, Mr. King. They crush the ore very fine, and it is then sluiced through the battery boxes and carried over the plates. I see. The plates are coated with quicksilver or mercury, and the quicksilver picks up most of the gold and from the crushed ore. And this combination of quicksilver and gold we call amalgam. And you scrape this amalgam off the plates and take it to the refinery? Yes, Mr. King. The refinery separates the gold from the quicksilver and casts it into bars. Very interesting. Well, thanks very much. I'll roam along and look the rest of the place over. See you later. That's where you belong, you old hag. Down there with your fat your face in the dirt. You try to kill the old hag. You're bad, you old Indian witch, and I'm going to finish the job right now. Put down that knife. I'll drop it between your ribs. Never mind, drop that knife, I said. You're the fool. Knock me down, will you? I'll show you. Hey, Ledger, put up that gun. Ah, uh, but Nate, this fella. Put up the gun, I said. What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to make Zolander behave. This fella interfered. It made me mad. Zolander, where is she? Ah, she's right. Well, I'll be darned. She must have run away while me and him was arguing. Ah. So you interfered, did you, mister? Uh, certainly I did. You're king, the newspaper man, aren't you? That's right. I'm here to I've been us. looking for you. I am Crosby, mine superintendent. I'll give you just 15 minutes to get out of this camp. So you're Nate Crosby. I am, and I'm the boss here. And I say, get out. All right, Crosby. I'll get out. But I'll be back. I never leave a job unfinished. Come up, you can carry them. I know they're heavy, but they have to have a solid lead lining so we can ship bodies in them. Put them in the old powder house and shut the door when you're through. Okay, boss. Come on, fellas. Okay. All right, get it up there. That's the stuff. Oh, boy, they're heavy. That does it. Now, we're going to have to move some of these empty powder kegs to make room for all three caskets. Jarvis, you stay here and pile them up out of the way. Rest of you get the other caskets. Okay, boss. All right, hop to it. It's Tubby. Tubby. Is that you, Nick? Where are you? Behind these cakes. Start piling them up. You can talk while you work. Oh, sure, Nick. But what happened, Nick? Why are you hiding in here? Crosby ordered me to get out of camp immediately. But the assistant super suggested I hide here until he get me a ride back to town. Seems he doesn't like Crosby any better than I do. What's with you? Well, I got a job as crusher man on the night shift at the mill. What are these boxes you're bringing in here? Caskets. Crosby told the teamster the bodies of the two detectives who got killed were to be taken up and shipped to their friend. White. Right. Come the men with another box. Get it in there. All right. Look at each Okay. Nick, there were only two detectives who were killed. Who do you suppose the third box is for? For you, I imagine, Scubby. What? Remember, they think you're Nick Carter. I'm only Mr. King, newspaper reporter. Uh, well, I'll certainly see that that casket stays empty. Scubby, you know where the detectives are buried? Well, the teamster told me that Crosby knows because he and a couple of the Milhams took the bodies away. I see. Scubby, yeah. I've got an idea. When the men bring in the other casket, you go out with them. Then make some excuse to come back in here again. Okay, Nick, I'll fix it. Quiet now. All right, fellas, right here. That's it. All right, that'll do it, I think. Yeah. Oh, hey, boss. What? I must have dropped my knife inside the powder house. Do you mind if I get it? Do what you want, so long as you're not late for your shift at the mill. Okay, boss, I'll be there. Oh, Kermit, they've gone. No, what's your idea? First, shut the door, Scott. Oh, sure, Nick. <laughs> Now, Scubby, I want to see what's in these caskets. Here, I've got a screwdriver in my knife. Oh, well, so have I. Look, I'll help you. Good. Well, I'm glad they only use four screws to fasten these covers down. Makes it simpler. But why do you want to see what's inside, Nick? Got a hunch, that's all. Yeah. There, it's got it. You all ready? Yeah. All right, let's lift her up. Give me a hand. Yeah. All right. There. Uh-huh. 
hunch is right, Scubby. The caskets are not lead lined. The extra weight is due to this scrap iron in the bottom. Because we said they had to have lead lining so they could be shipped with the bodies in them. These caskets figure in this game more than just as caskets, Scubby. Well, because we told the teamster to have a fresh team hitched to the large wagon for him at midnight tonight. I thought so. Scubby, he's going to take these caskets somewhere tonight. And I want to know where. Yeah, but how are you going to find out? I'm going with him. Hidden in this casket. I'll get in it and you put the lead, their lid back on. Oh, but Nick, you'll smother in there with the lid down. Scubby, you can put four small pieces of wood under the coffin lid before you screw it down. Oh, but Nick, I wish you would... Hurry up. All right. Pretty good fit. All right. Now hurry up. Okay, Nick. Keep your head down while I put the lid on. Okay. Now we have it. Have you learned anything yet, Scubby? Well, the only place in the mill where the gold could be stolen was the room where the battery boxes and the plates are. Well, have you found out how they did it? No, not yet. I hope to learn tonight when I'm on duty in the mill. Good, sir. You take care of that end. Now, what's this then? Yeah. Well, here's good luck to us both. I suspect we both may need it. How's the great Nick Carter doing tonight, Ledger? You mean Mr. Dave Jarvis? Yeah. He's doing swell. Look at him. He's taking another drink. He's been hitting the water bucket steady for the last half hour. Is the loco working? I'll say. The bees are in his bonnet already. Uh. A famous Nick Carter will go the way the other two did. <laughs> Hey, what are you fellas doing dancing around like that? <laughs> you can't fool me. There are a lot of billy goats. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, I'm thirsty. You gotta get me a drink. Keep your eye on him. If he starts fighting, lay him out with a crowbar. Uh, Don't take any okay. chances. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? He's heading for the cliffs, just like the others. The lander's mixture hasn't failed yet. What's next, Crosby? Ledyard, get my team from the stable at midnight tonight and meet me at the old powder house. Now we can put Nick Carter's name on the third casket. For Carter, we can bring this business to a successful finish. Oh, wait a minute. I hope we're not going far at this rate. You mean we're going to quit? We sure are. We'll market the stuff and make a clean getaway. Ah, this is the roughest ride I've ever had. Hey, 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 you're going to market the stuff. Leave uh, uh, that to me. I'll see that each of you gets. Stop him, what? Stop him! Hold him in! in. They're running away. One of the rings is broken. Running away? I didn't count on this. We're going to smash! Jump for your lives! We got off just in time, boy. Yeah. Hey, look at that casket, Crosby. The one with the lid torn off. Huh? Oh, that's the infernal reporter I ordered to get out of camp this afternoon. What was he doing in that casket? Never mind that now. Get him while he's only half conscious. Come on, Sam. Now you... Oh. 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 Good work, boys. That fixes Mr. Reporter. Ties hands and feet with that rope. Okay, boy. You won't fight no more for a while now. 
Hey, look, Super. Here's a pair of handcuffs in his pocket and a couple of guns. Hey, what kind of reporter are you? Going around with handcuffs and guns in your pocket. You'll have to draw your own conclusions, Crosby. I've drawn them already. You're here to help Nick Carter. But by this time, Carter's where neither you nor anyone else is going to help him. He's loco. Plum loco. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you never can be sure about Carter, Crosby. I can this time. And I can be sure of you, too. All right, put him back in the casket, boys. Put the cover on. Nail it down if you can't find the screws. Here, here's some nails. Come on, you. In you go. I got out the last time I was in here, Crosby. But you won't get out this time. Get the lid on, boys. That does it. That's, well, that's enough. He can't do anything with his hands tied. Lydiard, you and Sam get the shovels that were in the wagon and dig a nice deep hole. We'll bury our reporter friend with our blessings. I get here. Just before sun come up, they chase crazy man through woods. Then me here can shoot. See you run. You come fall down by the lander. Hurt in head. So the lander hurt. Well, certainly glad you were around when I passed out. Husby, you enemy? <laughs> certainly is now. You say you were chasing a crazy man? Mm. Him drink loco. But two other men come before. I wonder if that could have been Scubby. Crosby said he was loco. Sir Landa, what did you want to find him for? Me want to save him not. Give medicine. Make him well. But, but, but what did you want to save him? Crosby give him loco, this man. Sir Landa, eat Crosby. Want to save man. Crosby want to kill. Sir Landa, listen. I think this crazy... <laughs> no, Scubby. No, put that knife, Scubby. No, Scubby, no. Get that knife. Get that knife. Get that knife. There. No, no, I hate to do this to you, but it's the wicked way, so... No. Oh, there. Quick, the ladder. Give me some rope. I'll tie his hands and feet while he's unconscious. Ah, poor Scubby. Looks as if he'd been through the war. Oh, you're too tired. Thanks. Oh. Now. We get medicine. Make them all better from local. That's Scubby. That should hold you now. Here, take it. Make them well. Make them drink. Thanks. All right, Scabby, old boy. Come on, oh, I'll drink it. God. Come on, drink it. 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 Come on, There you are. Come on, that. Now, him sleep a little while. Be all right when him wake up. Poor guy. I'm not untie your arms anyway. Take this coat off you. And you'll be more comfortable. Hey. What this... One coil of wire with a lot of metal discs attached to it. What? That's the answer. Of course. The mystery of the Flying Duck Mine is a mystery no longer. Well, oh, oh, oh. Scubby, oh. feeling better now that you've had some sleep? Yeah, I feel pretty good. Why? You don't remember what happened to you yesterday morning? Well, the last thing I recall is going to the water bucket and taking a long drink. It seemed as if the more I drank, the more I wanted. Well, that water bucket was loaded with local weed juice. What? I'm surprised you didn't notice it. Well, oh, I'm surprised at myself now. But both the amalgamators, even Crosby himself, kept drinking. While pretending to from that same bucket. Well, they certainly had me fooled. Hey, look, Scubby. You remember seeing these discs strung on this coil of wire? 
Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I recall seeing one of the amalgamators have it last night. Why, did I bring it here? You did. And it breaks the case wide open. Well, good for me, even if I don't didn't know it. Hey, tell me, Nick, what are those discs used for? Here, I'll show you. Yeah. Now watch. Now you see? This stuff I'm scraping off is amalgam. A mixture of quicksilver and gold. The men who worked in the battery boxes in the mill, the amalgamators, hung these discs, and a lot more like them, in the battery boxes, right where they'd catch the best of the gold before it flowed over the other plates. They took out over half the gold that flowed into the boxes this way. So that's where all those thousands of dollars worth of gold disappeared to. Yes, Scubby. A very clever method of stealing the gold. Now, if we could only find out what Crosby and his gang do with the amalgam after they scrape it off their disc. Hmm. You want catch, Crosby? Well, I'll say we do if we could... Hey, Nick. Who is she? Oh, that's Zolanda. She saved my life. Oh, and yours too, incidentally. Saved my life? How? Well, that local weed juice you drank is fatal. Well, Zolanda gave you an antidote for it. Oh, gosh, thanks, Zolanda. Gee, I'm sure much obliged. Crosby tried to kill me. Me, it's him. Zolanda knew all about Crosby. You come with me. Well, where are you taking us? Mm. Crosby got cave inside mountain where he hide stuff. Come, me show you. This is where Crosby hides out, huh? Yeah. Too bad there's no one here now. But they've been here today. Look there, Scubby. Well, that looks like the scrap iron we took out of the casket in the old powder house before you hid in it. Right, Scubby. And this scrap iron was in the other two caskets. So they brought them up here. I wonder why. There's the answer. Over there in that corner. And the Thayer's furnace. And it's still warm, Scubby. Then we must have scared them off when we came up. Wait. Let me take the cover off this retort. There. Nick. Is that gold in there? That's just what it is. Out of the gold stolen from the mine. This is where the gang refined the amalgam they scraped off their discs. Much easier to handle gold this way because it weighs so much less. Now, since we know from what Dalrymple said that they never disposed of any of the stolen gold, they must have eight or nine hundred pounds of it by now. Hey, maybe they've got it hidden around here somewhere. They did have, Scubby. But not now. Well, what makes you think so, Nick? Here. Take a look outside there. They've been digging there very recently. Oh, but of course, Nick, they had to dig up the bodies of the two detectives to ship them back home. No, 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 Scubby. The way it looks to me is this. After I got away from them last night, Crosby and his men took up the casket they tried to bury me in and tried brought to over... bury you in? Hey, you didn't tell me about well, that. I'll about it later, Scubby. Right now, I'm interested in what happened here. They brought the three caskets up here early this morning. Loaded them up. How could they load three of them? They only had two bodies. No, Scubby. Three caskets were loaded up. Don't you understand yet? No, Nick, I'm afraid I don't. How could they be Scubby, loading up? How good are you at riding a horse? Riding a horse? Yeah. Well, I used to ride years ago. Why? Good. Zelanda, can you get us a couple of good, fast horses right away? For you, me, get two good horses quick. Good. Come on, Scubby. Let's get the horses and ride to the railroad station before the eastbound train gets in. Nick, what's all the hurry? Well, unless I'm wrong, Scubby, these three caskets are going east on the next train. We've got to get there in time to stop them. Oh, well, even Crosby himself would recognize us. These Indian costumes are wanting to let us. Well, we may need to be disguised before we get through. Hey, you didn't finish telling me how you got away from Crosby and his gang when they started to bury you alive. What did happen, Nick? Well, they dug the hole, and they put the casket down in it. I tried to pry the lid loose, but my hands were tied behind me. I worked on them, and just as they started throwing the dirt back on top of the casket, I finally got my hands free and untied my feet. Just then, I heard shooting and some female screaming. A female? Out there in the wild? Yeah. It was Zoland, I found out later. Well, I managed to loosen the cover and push it up enough to see that Crosby and the men were watching something across the clearing. So I seized my chance and climbed carefully out of the hole on the opposite side. I started to run, but they saw me and started shooting. Fortunately, though, they were bad shots, and I was almost free when a bullet grazed my head. It must have stunned me, because I remember nothing more till I woke up in Zolanda's hut this morning. Well, 
Do you know what it was that distracted the men's attention? Well, Zolanda told me that you were chasing her, trying to shoot her. She was screaming. You chased her around the other side of the clearing and then went off after something else. It was just about then that you saw me running toward her. When Crosby saw me drop, he gave up the chase. Zolanda waited until they went back and then dragged me to her hut. Gosh, Nick, we owe a lot to Zolanda. Right, Scubby. And the best way we can pay that debt is to see that Crosby and his murdering pals end up where they belong, behind bars or in the electric chair. Understand, Patsy? Of course, Nick. You want the police chief to meet you at the station in ten minutes. And you want Mr. Dalrymple and the president and treasurer of the mine to meet you in the chief's office in an hour. That's right. I'll be sure you get them all. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. These are the ones, Nick. These three here on the baggage truck. Did you notice the names on them, Scubby? Yeah. Joe Briley, Phil Kessler, and oh, look, Nick Carter. Hmm. I'd rather be out here dressed as an Indian than in there dressed as a corpse. One side, <laughs> there, rain in the face. We got to get these caskets into the baggage car. Oh, just the... a minute. You see this badge? Special agent. So what? What do you want me to do? Just leave these caskets in the baggage truck for now. But they're supposed to go on this... staying here, quiet. Hey, look here, baggage master. Get these boxes on the train and be quick about it. No be in hurry, mister. Why, you Indian meddler, what the deuce huh? do you... You look behind you. What do you mean? Take your hat off, Scubby. Sure, Nick. There you are, Mr. Crosby. Dave Jarvis. Why, you... Don't try to start anything, Crosby. I've got my gun on hey, you. Hey, where are you getting these boxes off? Hey, your man, officer. These three right here. Get your hands up, all of you, and pass. Hey, what the you devil, you pass? Pass? What is it? Quiet, all of you. You three men are under arrest. Charged with probably the flying duck mine and with the murder of Detectives Riley and Kessler. Now, Mr. Dalrymple, I asked you and the officials of the flying duck mine to meet me here in the office of the chief of police because I want to show you what's in the casket that Crosby was taking back east with him. Now, the first casket is supposed to contain the body of Phil Kessler. All right, Scabby, open it. Sure, Nick. Cold. Gold bullion. Yes, Chief. In these three caskets, you'll find the entire amount of gold stolen from the mine. Stolen by Dalrymple, the mine manager, Crosby, the mine super, and four of the workmen who worked in the amalgam room of the mill. They stole the amalgam, refined it in their own furnace, and buried it in two holes in the ground, which was supposed to be the graves of the two dead detectives. With Mr. Carter, that much gold would make the caskets pretty heavy. Wouldn't that extra weight be noticed? No, Chief. Because when you ship a body by train, the casket has to be lead-lined and hermetically sealed. That means it weighs much more than the usual casket. Crosby, Ledger, and Perkins were each going to take one of the caskets east with them as a personal baggage, which would prevent anybody from examining them too closely. One of the cleverest schemes I've seen in a long time. But it wasn't clever enough, not with Nick on the job. You have to get up early in the morning to beat Nick. <laughs> was another strange experience of Nick Carter, master detective, called The Flying Duck Murders, or Nick Carter and the Gold Thieves. 